Nicole, I have to tell you something. So, I had a tarot card reading, and I think one of the cards kind of negged me. Mm, that's harsh. Mm. But how can a piece of paper neg you? Wait, Nicole, it's not a piece of paper. It's a tarot card. It's a mystic piece of paper. A passive-aggressive mystic piece of paper in this case. So, right, the thing is, I got the two of pentacles. Oh my god. Where? Where? Whoa! The, the two of pentacles? Mm -hmm. That's so good or bad? Okay, so since you asked, the two of pentacles is, basically it's a card about work-life balance. It means that you need to attend to your personal life as well as your work life, which is, you know, fine. But I mean, I am busting my ass at my day job to do stand-up every evening. You know, my other full-time job that's entirely at my own expense, nearly. And then this card comes along, and the card is like, hmm, so maybe you should take a bit of a break? Maybe you should get a yoga app? Yeah, maybe I would love that, Two of Pentacles, but maybe, also, you could fuck off, Two of Pentacles, and leave me alone to my 5,000-hour work week. Go away, you're just two haunted plates on a card. Why am I being personally attacked by this mystic crockery from outer space? Do you know that um, Frank Ocean took three years off before he wrote his new albums? Oh, so that's what the cards were trying to tell me, that I should take a full three years off from the back of my hugely successful debut album, what? because I am Frank Ocean. Shan, do you want to be Frank Ocean, or do you want to be The Beatles? What? Well, The Beatles were just churning out album after album after album, massively appropriating stuff, and just taking stuff from the pop zeitgeist. They were such big zeitgeist sluts. They were massive zeitgeist sluts. Just getting that zeitgeist every day. That was them, yeah? Whereas Frank Ocean, okay, he writes from his personal experiences about his ethnicity and his sexuality, and he was like, look, I am going to take a bit of time to actually live and be a human person so that I can keep my music authentic to me. It is the big thing that keeps me up at night, you know? Am I the Beatles or am I Frank Ocean? Can't sleep. Or are you human? Or are you dancer? Mm. Nicole, have you ever spoken to an American comic when you're up at the fringe and they're like, it is insane that you guys do this every year, like with a whole brand new show? And where are that where are those Americans from? Uh from America. And they sound like that. Yeah, that's what Americans sound like. All right, get off my range. <laughs> what range? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? No, yeah, look, I do know what you mean, because I feel like I have that conversation with American comedians, and it really confuses me. Mm. Because I feel like, for me, I'm doing one show, and I'm thinking about ideas for the next show, and I'm also thinking about ideas for, like, four other shows that I would be writing and doing if I didn't also have to hold down a day job. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I guess the UK has this really fixed festival mentality. I mean, it's really gross, but the performers, Edinburgh is just our Jerusalem, where we make our yearly pilgrimage to reinforce our faith in being so broke and sad. It is exactly the same in Australia. Mm. The father, the son, and the crippling debt are men. Goodbye. Goodbye, money. Farewell, Cash! Bye. 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 See, you can do a whale. Alright. <laughs> can you do an American whale? Or yeah. Why? Yeah, so you can't. I can't. Yeah. Hey, Nicole. Have you found writing theatre shows easier than writing comedy shows? I mean, I would say that I was always making theatre shows in some senses, because my comedy shows still had like 
characters and storylines and like other elements that I was employing and it was sort of like okay there's like this segment this segment this segment kind of like act one two three or whatever mm. or like monologue 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 and then like injecting jokes into those segments and then with my theater shows I was like okay so this is the topic say stripping say anxiety say ethnicity and then like what do I want to say about this stuff and then how do I kind of put in some moments of maybe comedy, but maybe things like music, dancing, other stuff to kind of give what comedy gives, which is like making something that's maybe a little bit scary or a little bit strange, a little bit foreign, more accessible with the joke, the laughter, you know? Mm, yeah. I mean, similarly, that's sort of how I felt about the show last year, like mm. the Lemon show. Um, I felt like I had the whole show. It then just needed to be pieced apart and individually written um and in a way it was mad to go from never having done a solo show to then suddenly a 45 minute show instead of the whole you know you do 10 minutes then you split an hour with two comics then you split an hour with another comic and then you do your own show you know um yeah but i don't know i felt like the shape of the show was there i just had to get on with writing it and it feels the same with the show this year and the one next year and maybe the one after yeah yeah because I think, like, it's really crazy to me because I never understood all this, like, weird comic mentality of, like, this is how you do it. Because, you know, four months into doing comedy, I was writing or I had written my first show. And people were like, how can you do that? You've only been doing comedy for a certain amount of time. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I want to be good at doing shows. I want to be good at writing a whole show. And, like, how does the structure of that work? How does, like employing different elements like characters and songs work like that's what I was interested in I wasn't interested in like oh hey here's me being comic and like perfecting the craft of comedy like I was like I'm a performer and comedy right now is my medium mm. Jack I feel as a friend that you do a lot of like apologizing and like I don't want to take up too much space, you know, on stage and also just like creatively in general. And I think it's a very gendered thing. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And it is something that I'm working on, but do you know what the mad thing is? Like, I spend so much time being a rampant cheerleader for other female comics and female creatives generally. And I get so frustrated by the number of conversations I have with women that aren't like about what you're doing but are about just giving yourself permission to do the thing um and yeah and yet when it comes to my own work I'm like I've just internalized that British self-deprecation thing for one and then also the female self-censorship thing and like the net result of both those things is like hi uh hi I'm Shan <laughs> I'm a woman sorry Shan, if I may, in the wise, wise words of the foremost poet of our glorious time on this spaceship Earth, Cardi B, drop two mixtapes in six months. What bitch working as hard as me? Do you know what I'm saying, Shan? Do you know? What I'm saying. Do you know what I'm saying? Shan, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, because I feel like you do.